Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. Hope you are having a great day. I've had a stressful day, let's say. This painting has uh, been a challenge. It's painted in Rebel, watercolour, wet street scene. Just watch this video and see the ups and downs as I get to this final result. I think you're going to like this one. For this painting, I've got Rebel set at A4 at 200 dots per inch. And I thought I'd try a different paper. I'm using something called EX15 Crumpled, which is a custom paper, which I got from um, Humble Bundle. And I've got my first layer. I'm gonna choose a pencil I think I'll probably be drawing with the 2B pencil. Yeah. Notice I've set the color at sort of 50% gray for this. And I'm going to speed through the sketch because obviously it's all about the painting, isn't it? I would say about the sketch that I've got the pencil a little bit thicker than I would normally have it if I was doing um, a painting on actual paper uh, I will be drawing a lot more delicate but if I did that you wouldn't be able to see it on the screen so I've got to make that a little bit thicker uh, I use the resize option there just to um, scale the person and it, I, I kind of got it wrong after real re rescale uh, back up again you'll notice is the um, in the image there's a person on the right I don't want that uh, person in the painting I just want the sole character in the wet street because this painting is all about painting a wet street scene um, <clears throat> I kind of got this wrong and you'll see me uh, rubbing out a lot I tried to do more of uh, erasing and then redrawing rather than scaling I know I, I sort of rescaled the person uh, initially but uh, the rest of the drawing not all the time but most of it I try and uh, do it a, a much more traditional way where I'm sort of rubbing out and rethinking uh, things y you'll notice I move the pavement because I got that um the, the not the pavement the zebra crossing I've got that wrong oh and there I go look I um did resize that so like I say I didn't use the eraser all the time I got the zebra crossing sort of cutting through the bag on the left of the person and it was clearly meant to be much higher than that. This drawing, I have to say, um, is uh, I spent a lot longer on this than what I would normally do. I sort of getting quite a bit of uh, detail in there. Usually I spend two or three minutes um, doing the sketch which is about what this is speeded up but in actual fact this full drawing took me the best part of 25 minutes um, just to get the sketch in so th this is one reason why I'm doing the audio after because I just wanted to concentrate on the painting for this one um, I didn't want to have to be sort of talking through every steps and then what I thought I'd do I would replay back uh, the video uh, speed up bits where um, you don't need to see what the tools I'm selecting are like this sketch and then where uh, I've got things that probably aren't quite so obvious I'll slow it down you'll notice there I sort of reposition the old sketch into the middle of the paper so let's get into the painting the first step once the drawing is done is to create a new layer for the uh, watercolor to go on and then I'm going to rename the sketch layer sketch that seems uh, logical and if i'm sensible i will lock that layer because there we go just locked it because i don't want to um paint on that by mistake so and it is something that i do a lot i'm picking the mop brush you can't see that there underneath the um uh 
thumbnail of, of the uh, tablet, but uh, I, I've got the mop brush and I'm back to uh, painting in uh, real time now. So I've slowed it back down again so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I've got the size up to max, pressure up 67%, loading at 80% and water at 62 and this is just a sort of a first experiment and what i'm trying to achieve here you notice i am not worried about painting in between those defined lines i want a very soft edge to this painting i want it to be really moody and wet and the look that um it's raining and we haven't got a lot of detail there will be little areas of detail but um not too much and you notice straight away just lifting out those highlights on the roofs of the buildings little touches like that are quite important and then i'm going to go back in and sort of put where i think local color should be so if you look at the uh, sketch you'll see i'll be putting sandstone where i think we've got sandstone and red brick obviously for the red brick mysteriously enough and the buildings on the right hand side where i've removed the second person i'm just going to make up i'm just going to um just sort of wing it i, I don't really know what i'm going to do with that just yet but uh, but we'll see So you can see I'm sort of adjusting the colour all the time. There we are, getting that sort of sandstone in on that building there. And there we are with the redstone. And just sort of getting local colour over the whole of the paper. And that's what this is really all about. It's sort of um, getting rid of all that white space. And if you're new to watercolouring or any kind of painting, I suppose, really, this is a great way to get over that initial fear that you've got a blank sheet. Well, I've already done the sketch, but most people are okay with that. But you get the sketch done, then you're scared to do the painting. And you just see this sort of white sheet in front of you. And by putting these colours on, it removes that fear. And also, probably more importantly, it will... Uh, enable you to judge your lights and darks because if you've got a light colored paper and you um start putting your darkest darks on they will appear a lot lot darker against that white paper than they would against a mid-tone so by sort of putting on all of that uh, sort of local color first and i am sort of putting some dark areas in and i'll now i'm going to put some light areas in and let them all blend together um i'm, I'm quite happy with the way this is going really it sort of helps you sort out your tones a little bit later on i'm going to try and keep that top right corner quite um light really I'm just going to speed it up here just to uh, get the initial wash on uh, that covers the whole of the screen because um, it's pretty much all of the same thing going off there. And then I lift out a few highlights, the, the same as I did with the roofs. And I've instead of using the uh, flipping the stylus over, I'm actually using the eraser feature of uh, Rebel. So there we go. Now. The next stage let's create a second layer that was all of the speed bit done so we're back to normal speed again now and um, we need to get that second layer done because i'm going to do an overpainting and start to look at the features of the building and um, <clears throat> put in a little bit of detail i'm kind of reluctant to say detail really but um in a second you'll see me starting to once i've decided which brush i'm going to use and i think i've picked the filbert brush there so uh, most of the paintings done with standard brushes i do use one of my brushes a little bit later on but that's much later in the painting so you can see what i'm doing now i'm picking out 
shadows that have been created and um, I start to put those in and I'm looking at the freshness of that and I'm loving that and I'm kind of wishing that I'd um, kept that kind of freshness throughout the, the painting but I don't I kind of really work this one and uh, try lots of different things uh, as you'll see as we progress but um, I do like that kind of nice freshness and getting sort of the uh, darker side to that wall there and I don't want a lot of detail so you can see I'm sort of um, trying to keep flat washes I suppose you'd call them on there and um, the biggest problem I had was softening the edge if anybody's got a good technique of how to soften the edge uh, of one side of a wash so you sort of create a straight line that and then where I'm going on the right you might want to sort of blend that in other than having a wet edge to bleed it into how could that how could you soften it I was sort of I did struggle with that so if anybody's got any tips for that that would be uh, very useful there I've turned the you can see I've turned the stylus round uh, so, but really the best way is to use the eraser uh, feature in Rebel, which you can see I'm doing now. It's easy enough to just click on that and you can, um, you've got a lot more control really. And it looks a lot more organic rather than if you, if you, I think if you flip the stylus over, it, it feels like you're airbrushing over it rather than painting watercolour. This watercolour took me quite a long time, all in all. It was well over an hour's worth of um, painting and, well, 25 minutes for sketching. I must have spent another hour or so painting it as well. I kind of want it sort of nice and have uh, some nice colours in there and not too dull although I could have sort of totally worked this as a gray really gray wet day I've kind of gone for the more sort of sparkly um, colors being highlighted by the wet surfaces type of look than the really gray depressing uh, feeling that you can get with rain because that's how I love the rain I'm a bit people say I'm a bit uh, mad because I much prefer a rainy day to uh, a sunny day and and the reason for that is it's just the light is changed so much by the rain and it affects all the surfaces and I just find that really really exciting plus I don't like to be too hot I don't like to be in the sun I'll never sit in the sun you'll always find me tucked away in the shade somewhere um I didn't used to be like that when I was younger when I was younger and I was a house painter many many years ago I'd put my ladder when I was painting an outside. I'd find the sunny uh, perspective of the building, stick my ladder up there, and just follow the sun round all day. If I was to do it now, which I'm not going to, because uh, those days have, have gone now, I would um, put the ladder in the shade and go the opposite way. Unless I'm decorating for myself, of course. But we've got um, plastic windows, so and faces, so there's none of that to be done anyway i digress it's not really all about my painting and decorating days so you can see i'm sort of um picking out detail and i think at this point i can whiz it along again because it's sort of pretty much the same thing uh, when i create my next layer i'll um obviously slow it down again
at this point, I was a little bit frustrated that I couldn't get the edges to uh, soften the way I want to. I, I really do need to sort of experiment with that a little bit more with Rebel. So what I turned to in frustration, I turned to using the smudge tool to um, blend these colors. And then I started to get this really nice effect that um, I quite liked. And I thought, you know what, I can go over the whole of this um, underpainting that I've done so far, not underpainting, the, the second layer of painting. Uh, I can go over that and soften some of these edge edges and kind of get like vertical and horizontal strokes being pushed into them uh, that you would get from sort of um, light sort of bouncing off objects when it's raining. So uh, that's what I'm doing there. So I don't know how I would, I could probably do something similar with a um, dry brush or a flat brush, wet, damped, and then sort of wipe with a towel and drag through the paint. You get something similar to this, but this is really kind of a digital technique that I'm using now rather than a technique that um, you would employ if you was painting traditional watercolor. So I wanted to show you that. Uh, I, I felt that that was uh, an important step in the painting. I'm just going to speed this up uh, quickly just so I can get to creating the next layer because there's only a little bit left of this sort of blending to do. So here we are. We've created the next layer. You'll notice, uh, those of you that are observant, that I've got layer three underneath layer two, which isn't strictly where it should be it should be above level two i clearly didn't see that for quite a while so um i don't know if it stays underneath or what but that is going to give me some problems i would imagine because it should be put above um layer two and because i'm painting on an area that i didn't really touch on the uh layer two i still i'm not aware of what's going off notice i've got the liner brush selected and i'm just sort of strengthening up this character i'm, I'm surprised at how um, quickly the pencil lines vanished and i found it difficult to um see the lines underneath the wash and at one point i think it was earlier on you sort of sort of saw the page flash white where i turned off the uh, underlying layer so i could actually see there we go i've put layer three on top now at that point i must have realized there was something amiss yeah so what was i saying um i've, I've lost me me train of th thought oh yeah um i uh, switched a layer off so i could see the pencil layer so i could um sort of follow the shape and then switched it back on but because it was on a speeded up area it looked it just sort of flashed quickly on the screen so i'm into doing a bit more defining and um trying to although I'm sort of defining certain areas, still keeping it looking really wet and loose. So clearly not happy with that. So I'm sort of putting more detail in now. So I'm sort of going in with the person's bag. Obviously there's got to be shading put on that when I get the color in, or maybe I think I might have sort of put the shading in first, then the color on, but I'll certainly playing around with it i wasn't you can see i'm sort of wasn't happy with what was going off there it, it is i do find rebel qu quite frustrating at some times because i do know exactly what i want to get with watercolor when i'm using it 
and it just sort of, sort of comes second nature. Whereas with this, I am sort of thinking, how do I do that? How do I get that effect? And um, it it was frustrating at times, I have to say. But I haven't tried anything this complicated before um, in Rebel. Everything I've done has been fairly straightforward. But this, this one was a little bit more um, complex, I should say with the amount of layers I used and the detail that I wanted to get in the piece without there actually being too much detail, of course. Um, I'll just quickly say about layers that um, I didn't use multiply layer or any modes or anything. I just sort of created a layer and started painting on the uh, layer underneath. I don't know if that would have made much difference. It might have had a little bit of uh, sparkle to it, but I was quite happy with um, how it was going, to be honest. So you can see I'm using the eraser there. So I'm still using, when I say the eraser, I'm using the liner brush, but I, I had the eraser switched on just to lift out some of that color that I'd put in. The umbrella gave me a, a bit of an headache as well. That sort of took me a while to get exactly how I want. So this video, I don't want it to be too long. So I'm, I am going to speed it up again because I'm just sort of going over now and you can see I'm um, putting it, I'm adding more detail all the time as I'm going. So um, I hope you like the music that I'm putting to this. Um, I'm going to try and keep it all, all, all the music that I'm using. You may have noticed over the uh, previous videos, I've sort of gone from the heavy rock theme to uh, more of the classical uh, mood, which I think suits these videos better. So here we go. Please enjoy this. This is an interesting technique that I'm using now. I've now gone for the flat brush and sort of put in some um, darker tones in. I just wanted it to be a little bit more um, color on the foreground. But then what I do, I switch to eraser and you can see I start lifting out more color. And because, um, it's a fairly dry brush. You can see the brush strokes and that is a really nice watercolor brush effect. So I start working over uh, the all of the painting. And this is the point where I feel for me that I start to uh, bring the painting back because I was struggling. I was beginning to think this might be a failure at this point, but this is where um, it all starts to come together and because I don't like the character I think it just looks like I've put really thick paint on and all that needs 
softening up like you've got water running in your eyes from the rain and you're struggling to see any detail and that's what i'm trying to achieve so i need to um, soften off that person and you can see now i'm just starting to do it look so it's the flat brush i've got the eraser put on and i'm just lifting the color out and you'll see i'm switching between layers as well to find the layers that i've where i've painted the uh, dark tones and I start to just, just push away that color. And this, this is a really important step. Uh, if you was doing this on, you, you might be saying, well, you can't do that in watercolor. You can, you totally can, because again, you'd use that flat brush. Um, you'd just damp the tip of it, you'd wipe it on your paper, you just stroke the, the paper of the colour, say it's dry, your watercolour would be dry and you'd strike that and then just tap it with a tissue and it would lift the colour off. So unless you're using a staining pigment, uh, by what I mean by that is a staining pigment such as a lizarine crimson or, or Windsor blue, they don't they actually stain the paper like when you've had a curry and you splash it on your shirt and you, it stains it you can't get it off you've got to get some sort of um stain remover on it to remove it well that's what those pigments are like to your paper so uh, as long as you're not using the staining pigments you can lift it right back to almost white paper So this, this was the most uh, fun bit for me, I think. And I really started to get back into it again because I was just sort of losing art with it and thinking, well, I don't know, is it is it really what I want? Is it, is it going out? I, 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 I felt I was getting some really depressing looking greys in there that needed uh, sort of softening out. And this is how I did it. And now I've flicked back to the uh, colour again using the same brush and just put in a few more strokes of colour um, to knock back some of the whiteness of it. So it's added a freshness back into the old scene which um, had pretty much disappeared. So there we go, I'm just going to um, speed it up again.
So I've got it signed and then I felt I need to do one more thing. So I merge all the layers together. So I select them all and then I struggled to find out. I couldn't remember where it was. I knew it was under layer, but I just didn't see it. Merge layers, control E, just flatten all of those. I didn't add the sketch layer though, just all of the uh, painting layers that I'd created. I merged them all together. And the reason I did that is I wanted to lift out some highlights. So imagine the sun coming from um, right in front of you, actually, in front of those or, or just in the distance behind those uh, buildings on the right. So that the sun would be between that steeple and the buildings on the right with the roofs highlighted white. And it would sort of put an halo of light around my person carrying the umbrella so I felt that I needed to just um, use the eraser so again I've chose the liner brush I've got the eraser selected and I'm just going to go in and add some rim light to and a little bit of detail on the umbrella you'll see as well uh, to this person and because the the sun is uh, positioned between that steeple and those buildings it would put light on both sides of the person and it would highlight uh, bits of the buildings on the left and right side so this is a win-win for me so i'm just this is like, like finally putting in a little bit of detail in all of this sort of mayhem and uh, blurriness that I've created over uh, the old scene, even around that little uh, zebra crossing light we've got going there. So this was a fun step because I knew at this point that I was close to finishing and um, I'd salvaged what I thought at one point might have been um, a complete failure. So it's quite rewarding to watch this uh, final few little bits of details going in i'm even going to highlight the people because i felt that now they've all sort of uh, disappeared into this blur which is what i wanted but i'm thinking maybe i've overdone i've overdone it i want a little bit more of um definition back in there Yeah, a little bit on the steeple as well. So I'm just basically going over the all of the uh, painting and just looking where I think a little bit of sparkle might add something uh, to the final result. I wanted to get on the people. And I like the character. Uh, I, I'm really pleased the fuzziness I've got around their legs where the rain would be sort of splashing up and you just wouldn't see any uh, definition at all. And I wanted a few highlights on the zebra crossing as well, just to make that um, pop a little bit, a little bit on the pavement, the curbstone. Just popping in little bits of detail. You could do this with gouache if you was working on a, a you know a traditional painting and i could have done it with gosh as well i could have uh, used some uh, solid white on this 
but I wanted to uh, do the sort of um, eraser technique because I wanted to see the paper. I think the white would have, it would have looked like a different color to the paper and I wanted it to, to, for the paper to shine through. So that's why I've done it that way. Putting a few of the little paving stones in now. So I've kind of gone back. This is like back to the drawing stage, isn't it? Where I've, um, where I began. I'll stop talking because I'm just mesmerized with um, how I'm transforming it. There we go. Look, just a little bit of uh, detail on the people where the sun's catching them as well. So obviously the sun's, when I say, I mean, it's chucking it down with rain, but in the distance we've got the, the sun. It may be uh, diffused by a cloud, but you've got the natural light. So it's not like bright sunlight as such. Um, more diffused soft light but obviously everything's magnified by the uh, wet rain or maybe uh, the sun is out in full but this is under a cloud storm one of those weird um, strange moments <laughs> I'm making this up as I go along I didn't like that circle there there we go. That's it. That is my um, painting a wet street scene in Rebel. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have a big thumbs up would be uh, absolutely fantastic. It helps me out a lot. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I've got loads of videos like this. I would um, love to be sharing them with you. Don't forget everybody. Stay safe. Stay sane and most of all, keep painting. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.